Hey what is up guys welcome to another video in this video I'll be going through how to solve simultaneous equations with quadratics uh, so you might be given a question involving two equations and the first one might look like this something like 2x minus y equals 7 and then you're given a second equation such as x squared minus 15 equals y and you're asked to solve these simultaneous equations you need to do these through substitution so you take the first equation and rearrange it in so that y is the subject and then substitute it into the second equation generally a good rule to go by is to rearrange the equation without a squared term in it it will just make it simpler um, you could do it the other way but I find it easier to just rearrange the the linear equation rather than the quadratic equation so if we take the first equation and rearrange it in terms of y then we can substitute it into the second equation uh, so we take uh, 2x minus y equals 7 and then subtract 2x from the other side so minus y equals 7 minus 2x and then divide everything by minus 1 to change this into a positive y and this becomes a plus 2x and a negative 7 okay so now we know that y equals 2x minus 7 we can substitute that into the second equation um, so we get x squared minus 15 equals and take this value of y so 2x minus 7 okay so I hope you can see what I've done there I've taken this and substitute it in for y here um, so I end up with this equation and then I can simplify this equation uh, so it's in the form of a quadratic which I can factorize and solve so subtract everything from the left hand side so we get x squared uh, minus 2x and then minus 15 plus 7 because that's a negative 7 it becomes a plus 7 when we move it to the left hand side so minus 15 plus 7 that will be minus 8 and that equals 0 because we don't have anything left on the right hand side so now I have a quadratic x squared minus x minus 8 equals 0 and we need to think of two factors of 8 that make minus 2 well 8 equals uh, 4 times 2 and then uh, minus 4 plus 2 equals minus 2 uh, so I can use the factors of 4 and 2 and uh, well I have x and x makes x squared and then I need a negative 4 and a plus 2 and if we expand those out we'll get x squared minus 2x plus uh, negative 8 and so now we know that x equals plus 4 or x equals minus 2 now I have two values of x I can substitute them into one of the original equations to find the values of y and I might use this equation here it looks the easiest so if I know that y equals 2x minus 7 I can say when x equals 4 y will equal 2 times 4 minus 7 which is 8 minus 7 so y equals 1 and then when x equals minus 2 uh, y equals 2 times minus 2 minus 7 and then uh, y equals minus 4 minus 7 so y equals minus 11 so my solutions here are going to be uh, well the first two values were 4 and 1 and my second values were minus 2 and minus 11 so the solutions could be uh, 4 and 1 or minus 2 and minus 11 okay so that's the basic approach to solving simultaneous equations with quadratics you take one equation rearrange it in the form of one variable such as y and substitute it into the second equation so I'll go through a few more examples uh, you might get a question such as y equals 5x minus 3 and y equals 3x squared plus 6x minus 7 so this is the first equation and second equation uh, so this is conveniently already in the form y equals so I can take the second equation and substitute it straight into that so I'll take uh, this value for y and substitute it in here so I can say that therefore 5x 
minus 3 equals 3x squared plus 6x minus 7. And then simplify this to get it in the form of a quadratic equation. So subtract 5x from this side and plus 3 to that side. So I'll be left with 0 on the left hand side and 3x squared uh, 6x minus 5x. That'll just be 1x or plus x. And then minus 7 plus 3, that will be minus 4. Uh, and then I'll just switch it around so I have the quadratic on the left. So 3x squared plus x minus 4 equals 0. And then we need factors of 4 and 3 that make plus 1. So factors of 4 might be 4 and 1. By the way, if you're not confident with factorizing quadratics, I've done a video on factorizing quadratics, so you can check that out if you want, if you think that would be helpful. Um, but anyway, so factors of 4 are 4 and 1, and we also need factors of 3 that match up with these factors. So if I multiply 1 by 3 and 4 by 1, so these are the factors of 3, these are the factors of 4, if I multiply them together, this makes 3 and this makes 4. I need to make plus 1. So this needs to be a negative 3. Uh, so this needs to be a negative 1. Negative 1 times 3 would be negative 3. Um, so now I have all of the factors I can use. So firstly, I'll write in the factors of 3x squared, which is 3x and x. And then the negative 1 needs to match up with the 3x, so I put that in at the end of the second brackets, and then uh, plus 4 matches up with the 1x. Okay, so I factorize that. If you expand that out, you'll get 3x squared plus x minus 4. And so therefore, I know that x will equal minus 4 on 3, or x equals 1. So you take those equations, rearrange them to get the solutions for x, and uh, so, and then I need to substitute those into the original equation to find the values of y. Uh, so let's do that over here. So when x equals minus 4 on 3, y will equal 5 lots of minus 4 on 3 minus 3. Uh, so 5 times minus 4 on 3, that's minus 20 on 3 minus 3. Uh, to subtract these numbers, uh, well, we could change that into a mixed fraction or we can change this into a, a fraction out of 3. So I'll do it that way. So this is minus 20 on 3 minus 9 on 3. So I multiply that by 3 on 3 to make it so, so I have the same denominator. And then I can subtract the numerators. Minus 20 minus 9, that's minus 29 on 3. Uh, so that's one solution. And then when x equals 1, y will equal uh, 5 times 1 minus 3, which is 5 minus 3, which is 2. So my two solutions are minus 4 on 3, uh, minus 29 on 3. And if you want to write them as mixed fractions or decimals, that would be fine. Or we have 1, 2. Okay, so slightly more complicated question there. Also, you can get questions where you have to use the quadratic formula. So for example, you might get um, two equations such as these. So y plus 3x equals 8 and y equals x squared plus 2x plus 4. So this one's going to be the same as y equals 8 minus 3x. And then we substitute that equation in to where the y is in this equation. So if this was equation 1, this is equation 2, we get a new equation, which we can say 8, 8 minus 3x equals x squared plus 2x plus 4, and then simplify this. Uh, so subtract everything from the left-hand side, so 0 on the left, and then x squared, 2x plus 3x, that will be plus 5x, and then plus 4 minus 8, that would be minus 4. Uh, so now if you try to factorize this equation, uh, you won't be able to. Uh, so two factors of 4 are 4 and 1, and that makes 5, but you won't get a minus 4 if you use those two factors. So we actually need to use the quadratic formula to solve this, which says x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. 
and then substitute the values into this formula. So b is the coefficient of x, so that's going to be minus 5 plus or minus uh, 5 squared is 25, and then a, 4 times a is the coefficient of x squared, which is just 1, and then c is the last number on the end, which is uh, minus 4. So we have uh, minus 4 times minus 4 there, and then 2 times 1 on the bottom, which is just 2. And so we keep simplifying this, so we'll get minus 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 plus 16, because this is minus 4 times minus 4, which is plus 16. So 25 plus 16, that's 41 over 2. Okay, so then we have uh, the two values of x, which is minus 5 plus or minus the square root of 41 on 2, and we can substitute those into one of these formula to get the values for y. Uh, so if we, actually it might be easy to convert those to decimals first, so if we get our calculator out and put that into a calculator, so we've got uh, minus 5 plus the square root of 41 divided by 2, we get, uh, we'll press the SD button to change it to a decimal, we get 0 0.70156 that's one solution, and I might just do the y value before I move on. So when x equals 0 0.70156, y is going to be 8 minus 3 times that number. Uh, so let's put that into a calculator first. So 8 minus 3 times the answer and we get, uh, press the SD button, change it to a decimal, we get 5.89531. And then when x equals the other value, let's do that now. So we've got um, minus 5 minus the square root of 41 divided by 2. Change it to a decimal, we get minus 5.70. 156, so, uh, and then substitute that into y, so y equals 8 minus 3 times minus 5.70156, and uh, let's do that one now, so 8 minus 3 times the answer to that equation, and we get, change it to a decimal, 25.104. Uh, 25.105 rounded off, 25.105. And typically a question like this will say uh, round to two decimal places, something like that. So if we round these answers to two decimal places, the solutions become, what do we get? We get 0 0.70 and 5.90 or uh, minus 5.70 and 25.1. Now, if I hadn't rounded that off, it would be one zero. Okay, so that was an example of using the quadratic formula to solve uh, simultaneous equations involving quadratics. And uh, I demonstrated why it's important not to round off until the very end. So I should have actually added a few more decimals on here. Uh, if I'd written 25.11, I might have lost a mark there. So never round off until the very end. So sometimes you have to use a quadratic formula and I'll just go through one more example where you are given an equation of a circle. So you might have both of the terms squared. So you might have x squared plus y squared equals 50 and then y equals 3 plus 2x. And so then you, you still use the same process. So you take this value for y, substitute it into this equation. Uh, so the first equation is going to become x squared plus 3 plus 2x all squared equals 50. Okay, and then expand these brackets out so we get x squared plus 3 plus 2x times 3 plus 2x equals 50. And then x squared plus uh, 3 times 3 is 9 plus 3 times 2x is 6x plus 2x times 3 
that's going to make 12x altogether, and then 2x times 2x is 4x squared equals 50. And then simplify this, so we've got uh, x squared plus 4x is 5x squared plus 12x, and then 9 minus 50, that will be minus 41 equals 0. And this is another quadratic which we can't factorize, so there are no factors of 41 that multiply by the factors of 12, 5 that make 12, so we're going to have to use the quadratic formula again here. So the quadratic formula again is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac and uh, over 2a. So if you substitute all of those values into that, um, have a go, see what you get. Um, I won't go through the whole process now, I don't think you need to see me do the whole thing, but uh, you should get the values uh, for x of x equals 1.904 3 or minus 4.30483 and then if you substitute those x values into this second equation up here y equals 3 plus 2x uh, so multiply them by 2 add 3 and you get the values for y of uh, 6.80966 or minus 5.60966 and then usually these questions would say round to three significant figures or something. So if we rounded these to three significant figures, uh, the solutions become the solutions become uh, 1.90 and 6.81. So they are the first three significant figures. We need to round that off to one or we get minus 4.30 and minus 5.61. All right, so that was an example of simultaneous equations where both of the terms are squared. And uh, that's pretty much all the examples I'm going to go through. That should give you a good idea of how to approach these problems. Um, and you might have a question such as, well, what if both of the equations are quadratics? So if you were given a question like this where y equals x squared plus 3 and uh, something like 2x squared plus y equals 10, so there's an x squared in both, well this isn't a problem because it's still going to simplify to a single quadratic. So for example, if you took this equation, substitute it into the second equation, uh, you would get 2x squared plus x squared plus 3 equals 10 and you can see here this simplifies to 3x squared plus 3 equals 10 and you can still solve for x um, so it's not an issue if there's two quadratics in fact it's almost easier than if, if there's a, a linear equation and a quadratic equation also you might wonder how to solve simultaneous equations with cubic equations uh, now if you're a GCSE student you don't have to worry about cubic equations in simultaneous equations. They won't be coming up in the exams. If you're just curious how to do them, um, then it's a similar method to this, uh, but I, I won't be going through that in this video, maybe for another video. I hope you found that helpful. If you have any further questions or any other topics you want me to cover, leave them in the comments. Leave a like if you appreciated this video. Subscribe if you want to see more content, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.